Whoa. Now we're recording. So guys, the things that you need to grab are the notes page that I gave you and a pencil, could be a pen, doesn't matter. Then you need a calculator and then you need your periodic tables. And guys, let me just tell you right now, if you don't have the periodic table that I ask you to buy, don't even bother grabbing any other periodic table because it's going to fail you. Guys, understand when you take the test next Wednesday, you will need a periodic table. And if you ain't bought one by then, you don't get to use any other periodic table because again, it's not going to do you any good. It doesn't have the information you need. All right, so you guys ready to go? Let me explain to you what we're gonna do today. And guys, I, I hope that you appreciate this. Do you guys, un and you understand the topic, right? Metrics and density. Do you guys understand that you are the only students in a first world country that has to do what we are about to do? We are the only country other than some little country over by like Myanmar. Do you know the other country, Britt? There's one other country, I think like 11 people were, live there and like they have no economy. And anyway, but guys, we are the only country for all intents and purposes on the whole wide planet that hasn't said to the British system and adopted the metric system. Now guys, do you know that in the early 70s, we actually by congressional mandate as a country abandoned the English system and went to the metric system. Do you guys know that? Hey, so back in like 1973, when I was an itty bitty little boy, I had this, I wish I'd kept it, this really cool metric lunchbox. And it was intended to brainwash small children into thinking using the metric system. And guys, they went to all the highways and they ripped down the 55 mile per hour signs and they put up kilometer per hour signs and all the mileage signs on all those. It's not 45 miles to Salt Lake, it's 80 kilometers to Salt Lake. And all of the packaging for our food, they got rid of ounces and replaced it with grams and got rid of fluid ounces and replaced it with milliliters and it was no longer calories it was joules and they got rid of all of it and it lasted about a year and all of us fat lazy Americans said you can't make me change and it all went away except for one thing what was the one thing that stuck the two liter bottle of soda that was it <laughs> America. America. We're in America. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, that's it. It is the only thing that you purchase today in metric units is the two liter bottle of soda. And do you know why? Because a liter is slightly smaller than a quart and it saves them money because there's less soda in the bottle. <laughs> yeah. Guys, that's it. It's the only thing that survived. So here's the problem. We need to learn to think in metrics. And guys, you got to understand, I am very passionate about this, which sounds weird. I'm not passionate about this because I'm a chemist. I'm passionate about this because I'm a cyclist. And it drives me nuts. Today is stage 18 of the Vuelta de España. It's the second biggest race to the Tour de France. Drives my wife nuts because it's all I want to talk about. Chris Froome from Team Sky got his doors blowing off two days ago. All but he's the only, actually everybody else on his team got disqualified from the race because they didn't make the time cut. So they, I am just into this. But it drives me nuts because when I'm streaming British television to watch these races, everything's in metrics. So these guys are flying down these mountain roads at 100 kilometers an hour and I'm going, what does that mean? Is that fast? So I'm doing the math. And then they're talking about today's race is going to be a 170 kilometer stage. And I'm going, is that long? I have no idea. And Chris Froome weighs 65 kilograms. And I don't know if that's fat or skinny. And so I'm having to do all this math to figure out all this stuff. And then it's a really hot day and it's 40 Celsius. And I'm going, how hot is that? Is that like Dubai or is that like Provo? 
and I have no idea. So I'm having to do all these conversions. I wish 1973 had stuck and it would make watching cycling more easy. But guys, do any of you think in metrics? Have any of you lived in a metric country? Where'd you live? You lived in Australia? I didn't know that. And so every, do you still think metrics? You can pick, you can picture it. And as a cyclist, you probably have a motivation in this as well, a little bit. Yeah. So how long has it been since you lived there? Uh, what? <laughs> Your sisters didn't go, did they? Okay, but not, I didn't even know you were, how long were you there? No way, I had no idea. So guys, any of the rest of you lived in British countries or non-metric countries? S seriously, was that cool or was it scary? I'll bet, wow. That, how long ago were you there? And so do you learn to think in metrics? Was it weird going back? A little bit, was it weird going forward? It's like a new language, isn't it? But guys, when you really pick up the metric system, which I've got to be honest with you, I haven't done. In my pickup, I switched the temperature display from Fahrenheit to Celsius, and I still don't understand the Celsius scale. It's been a year. It just doesn't make, anyway. So guys, this is what we're gonna do today, and you've got this in front of you. <clears throat> we have got to get you away from thinking English and get you into thinking metrics. And guys, understand, I know you're not gonna be fluent. It's like learning a foreign language. I think Ms. Call would agree. In a French class, you can pick up French. But if you want to learn French, what do you got to do? Go to France, right? Guys, I'm not sending you to metric France. I don't expect you to be hyper fluent in this, but you at least need to understand the context. So guys, here's what we're going to do. You need to be able to think metrically in these five regions. You've got to be able to think metrically relative, and there's space, oh, those are already there, for length, volume, weight, mass, temperature, and time. Now, guys, you'll notice the first column. I gave you the English stuff. I will give you the English stuff. But, guys, cross it out. We are not going to use English units in this class. The only reason that I gave them to you is so that you have a point of reference. So when you're thinking length, you're thinking feet and inches and miles, because that's what you do. By the way, these are feet, inches, yards, and miles. Uh, that's what you do. But then we've got to realize that we're going to be thinking in metric units. So guys, you all understand the English system. Do you guys know where this came from? Do you guys know where the inch came from? It was the length of an Elizabethan king's thumb. You know where the foot came from? Take a guess. His foot. But guys, you understand how ridiculous this is, right? So there's 12 inches in a foot. Does that mean there are 12 feet in a yard? No, it's three. So there's three feet in a yard. Does that mean there's three yards in a mile? No, it's 1,760. Most of you didn't know that. So now let's go back to feet. How many feet are in a mile? 5,280. Guys, this is all crazy messed up. So let's make it easier. The metric unit for length is a meter. <clears throat> now guys, if you're curious, do any of you know how they originally defined the meter? This is cool. Any of you know? It is one ten millionth the distance from the North Pole to the equator. They were able to measure using shadows and the sun the distance that it must be from the North Pole to the equator, and they divided that by 10 million and called it the meter. So guys, if that's true, what is the circumference of the Earth in meters? 40 million meters, right? 10, 20, 30, 40. It's 40 million meters around the Earth because a meter is defined as 1 10 millionth the circumference of the Earth. Now guys, how do we measure things when we measure in meters? And obviously we use things like meter sticks and rulers. <coughs> okay, now moving along. You'll notice that down below your table, you've got a place for volume, weight, and mass. Is that the order they're in? Yeah. So guys, these are terms that you may not know. You know the definition of length, the distance between two points. But guys, what about volume? The next one we're going to do. If you don't know the definition of volume, let's get it out on the table. So what is it? Go ahead, Maddie. That's it, just write down the word space. That's all you need to know. 
It's how much space an object occupies. Now guys, you ready for ridiculous? What are the English units for volume? Fluid ounces, teaspoons, tablespoons, pints, quarts, gallons, barrels, hogheads. Most of this comes from beer making. But guys, it's seriously, it all traces back to Elizabethan brewing standards. It's forever old and all messed up. So if you don't, cups, quarts, whatever you want to write down, because it's all broken anyway. So guys, what is the metric unit for volume? It's this. This is the metric unit for volume. What is this? It is a milliliter. Now guys, how did they figure out a milliliter? Well, are you ready for this? This cube has the volume of a milliliter. But if you have a perfect cube that's a milliliter, you want to guess how long each one of these sides is? It's a centimeter. So a centimeter times a centimeter times a centimeter, which is a cubic centimeter, is the English or the metric unit of volume, and we call it the milliliter. Okay, now, that's actually not the only base unit. The other one is this. This is not a milliliter. This is a thousand milliliters, which is a liter. Now, a liter actually has a standard size as well. Remember our happy little meter stick? So guys, how long is this in centimeters? Well, it's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. But guys, 10 centimeters is a tenth of a meter, or it's called a decimeter. So this is a decimeter, 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 which is a decimeter cubed. So guys, those are our units. It will be liters, which are the same as decimeters cubed, or milliliters, which are the same as centimeters cubed. All right. So now, guys, let's do weight. What is the English unit for weight? The pound or the ounce. Oh, did it not come up? There we go. The ounce or the pound. But guys, we are not going to use ounces and pounds. We are going to use the metric unit for weight, which is what? It is not the gram. It's not the kilogram. So guys, it's actually, and I know we didn't define it, but I think when you see the name for this, you'll be able to come up with the definition. Guys, the metric unit for weight is actually the Newton. All right, now let's talk about what weight is because we didn't define it. So where did the name Newton come from? Sir Isaac. What is Sir Isaac famous for? sitting underneath a tree and an apple hit him on the head and he discovered gravity. So now guys go to that middle definition section to your page. Guys, what is weight? Weight is the force of gravity on an object. That's why our unit is the Newton because we are tipping our hat to Sir Isaac who we would say discovered gravity although there is some debate on whether or not Newton actually did get hit on the head with an apple, but he's still credited with discovering gravity. So guys, weight is the force of gravity. We go ounces or pounds. Uh, we, uh, in this class, we'll use Newtons, but guys, how do we measure weight? The answer is a scale. That could be a bathroom scale where you step on a platform, squeeze a spring, and the thing goes up. That could also be this. Guys, this is also a scale. And you put something on here and it stretches a spring. It even reads in Newtons. So guys, you measure weight, the force of gravity, using a scale. You good? All right, now this is where this gets interesting. Now we need to talk about mass. Let's define it first. Go down below. What is mass? Do any of you know? A lot of you, say it again. Exactly. Guys, write this down. Mass is an amount of matter. Weight is gravity pulling on that matter. But guys, mass is an amount of matter. 
Now you ready? I'll be curious to know if any of you know this. What is the English unit for mass? And now you know it can't be the pound because that's weight. Do any of you know the English unit for, for mass? None of you? It's actually the slug. Now, guys, I know that when you think of slug, you think of these little snail-like, gross, slimy things. But I'll bet you some of you know this because enough of you are deer hunters and enough of you want to hunt early in the season and you can't shoot a bow, so you got a muzzle loader. And if you are a muzzle loader person, you know that muzzle loaders do not shoot bullets, they shoot slugs. That's where the name came from. Back in Britain, back way back when, they were looking for a standard unit of mass, a standard amount of matter. And back then they didn't have rifles, they had muskets. And these muskets all shot the same size lead ball, which was called a slug. And so they said, we've got a bunch of these on hand. They're all the same size. They all contain the same amount of matter. So let's use that lead bullet, musket bullet, slug, and we're going to use that as our basic unit for mass. We don't do that anymore. We use the metric unit, and this is where the gram comes in. Now, guys, you may want to write this down because I think it'll be helpful for you to have a frame of reference. So, guys, how much mass is a gram? I'm going to give you two answers. You can write this down if you'd like, but it's nice to have something to picture. One is a big paper clip. This is a gram of steel. So when you think gram, be thinking paper clip. But guys, better than that, and some of you know this, I hope, guys, how much water has the mass of a gram? A milliliter. That's magic. Guys, it turns out that the mill, if you have, if you have water, if you have a milliliter of water, its mass is a gram. That's how they originally defined the gram. The gram was defined as the mass of a milliliter of water at two degrees Celsius. That's a whole other story because you know that water expands and contracts as it heats and cools. But guys, so a, a, a milliliter of water is a gram and don't worry about the temperature. You good there? So guys, how do we measure mass? And it's not with a scale. Do any of you know? It is with a balance. <clears throat> now, guys, in physics, you will get into the difference between the two. But if you've taken physics, you may remember this. This is a triple beam balance, and it measures mass. It does not measure weight. It measures mass. How much matter? How does that work? Well, you put a thing over here, and then you compare it to masses over here. So you're actually comparing an unknown mass to a known mass. Now guys, here's an interesting question. What do we have over in lab? The things that you use to measure your beaker and things like that. Are they balances or are they scales? They're balances. They measure mass. They measure grams. They are balances. And guys, it turns out that inside that balance, there's actually a little electronic seesaw that actually compares what's on the pan to a set of digital representations of masses just like these blocks. And so those are actually balances and not scales. So guys, bottom line is scales, weight, balance, mass. You good? Okay, two more to go. Next thing we need to do is temperature, Fahrenheit. Guys, what temperature does water freeze at in Fahrenheit? 32. What does it boil at? 212. Where on stinking earth did these numbers come from? Do any of you know? <laughs> Close. Um, actually, guys, what Fahrenheit, and Lord Fahrenheit was actually a guy. Um, what he did is he tried to create the coldest and hottest temperature he could come up with. This was hundreds of years ago. So the coldest thing that he could come up with was uh, ice water with salt in it. If any of you have made ice cream, you know that you put salt in ice and it makes the temperature drop. That's why you, we use rock salt to make ice cream. So guys, it turns out that he was able to get this salty water, this salty ice water, so cold that it was actually 32 degrees below freezing. So he called that zero. And then above that in pure water, that then made the freezing point 32. 
And then guys, what did he use for his 100 point? Body temperature. He stuck thermometers in people and figured that that's the hottest temperature that was normally created on, of course, fire and things like that. It was a long time ago. They couldn't stick a thermometer in fire. So they said, we're going to call 100 body temperature. What do you now know body temperature is? 98.6. He was close. He was off by a degree and a half. But that's how Fahrenheit came up with this scale. That's not the scale we're going to use. We're going to use Celsius or Kelvin. So guys, what is the zero point in the Celsius scale? Freezing point of water. What's the 100 point in the Celsius scale? Boiling point of water. In either case, we measure this with a thermometer. So guys, let me give you a frame of reference for this. What is the temperature in this room in Celsius? If it's 70 degrees, which is pretty close to 72, what's the temperature in this room? In Celsius, it's about 21. Room temperature, if it's comfortable, is typically 21 or 22 degrees Celsius. Okay. What's that? About 300. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, now let's do time, seconds and seconds, and a stopwatch, and we finally got something right. Okay. So, guys, any questions about these fundamental units in the metric system? Okay. So, now, guys, we get into a problem. You understand in the English system that if you want to measure something that's small, you wouldn't use a foot, you would use an inch. And if you wanted to measure something tall, you wouldn't use an inch, you would use a foot or a yard. And if you wanted to measure something like the distance to Salt Lake, you wouldn't use a yard, you'd use a mile. See, we have different English units that represent different sizes. The problem is, is in the metric system, we don't have that. If you want to measure length, you got to use a meter. And that works pretty good if you're trying to figure out how tall you are. But if you're trying to figure out the thickness of a piece of paper, all of a sudden that don't work so good. So guys, what do we do? And this is another place where the metric system is brilliant. Go down to the bottom. Oh, oh yeah, actually here. Go to the bottom of your page. And guys, I've done this all for you. You don't have to write it down except for this. See between kilo and deci, where I put the word whole unit? Write that in there. So guys, here's how this goes. We understand that, for example, this is a meter. This is the whole unit. This is a meter. Now, imagine that we want to measure something where this is not a, not a good choice, not a good unit to choose. Like, say that we want to measure the distance to Salt Lake. If we want to do that, this is obviously going to take forever, right? So what do we need to do? Well, we need something that is bigger than the whole unit. So what are we going to choose? We're going to choose kilo. So when we add kilo to meter, we now have a kilometer, which we call a kilometer. And guys, a kilometer is 1,000 meters. So if you need a unit that's bigger than the whole, then you're going to add something like kilo, and that will be thousands of the whole unit, and you can measure big things. Now, guys, what if we want to measure small things? Say that we want to measure the length of our pencil. Is a meter a good choice? Of course not. So we want to make it small, right? So what we could do is we could cut the meter in tenths and we could go decimeters. These are decimeters. Still not a great choice for a pencil. So let's make it even smaller and let's go centimeters. Better choice for a pencil? You bet. But we could even go one smaller and we could go millimeters. Better choice maybe depending on what you're measuring. But guys, would it make sense to go micrometers, millionths of a meter, to measure the length of a pencil? No, that's ridiculous. And guys, that's what you're going to work on today in class, is picking appropriate prefixes to make these things longer and smaller so that they're, they're legitimate measurement units. You get the idea? OK. Now guys, the last one we need to talk about is down at the bottom. You'll notice that angstrom is not in the chart. It is not a metric prefix. It is only a unit of length. And it is equal to 10 to the negative 10th meters. It is even smaller than a billionth. 
It is a tenth of a billionth of a meter. So guys, what on earth would we measure in tenths of billionths of meters? Atoms. And guys, that's why you need to understand angstroms in here, because you'll find out that it's our unit for, um, for the size of atoms. So you okay with the prefix idea? One more thing to do and we're done. And guys, I understand that this is review as well. I just need to make sure that everybody's up to speed. So guys, do this and flip your paper over and there's one little thing you need to scratch down and we're done for the day. And so guys, it goes like this. We now understand that volume is an amount of space we understand that mass is an amount of matter, and we understand that weight is gravity pulling on that mass. But guys, now what we're going to do is we're gonna talk about bringing two of those ideas together, and this is called density. So guys, you may just wanna write density at the top of your page there. And guys, density is a ratio. Density is a ratio of mass and volume. Some of you may choose to teach this as your thing for your investigation. And guys, the concept is density is the ratio of mass to volume. But we can also represent that mathematically by saying density is mass divided by volume. <clears throat> so you'll notice, as we mentioned in the introduction to the investigation, it's not just a concept. It is also a mathematical thing. And you'll want to touch on both. So guys, now let's give some units to this. You may need to flip over to the front of your page. Guys, what are our units for mass in the metric system? Grams. What are our units for volume in the metric system? Milliliters, centimeters cubed, decimeters, liters. And so guys, those then come together to give you the units for density. So our mass will be measured in grams, and then traditionally our volumes will be measured in milliliters or centimeters cubed. Now guys, don't let this, I'll let you write it down, and then don't let this next question slip past you. You okay? Which one is it? Is it grams per milliliter or grams per centimeter cubed? Why doesn't it matter? They're the, good, good, good. They're the same. Guys, remember, milliliters and centimeters cubed are the same. And guys, this is going to freak you out this year because, and it's not because I'm lazy, it's because I understand they're the same. Sometimes I'll write out the density in grams per centimeter cubed. Sometimes I'll write them out in grams per milliliter. And you're going to go, which one is it? Guys, you got to understand these are the same. Okay. Now, guys, grab your periodic table. This is our first contact with your periodic tables. So guys, allow me, Jared, to introduce you to your periodic table. So guys, the, probably the most helpful thing that I can point out to you right now is down in the lower left-hand corner of your periodic table, all the way down here. It's on both sides, but we're on the front. All the way down in the lower left-hand corner of your periodic table, you notice there's a decoder key it tells you what all of the numbers are in the boxes and it also gives you the units they don't put the units in the boxes because that would be just way too much writing so guys go down and look at that very bottom thing and guys you'll notice that the density is where in each one of these boxes left or right side left side top or bottom bottom what color will it be what are the units grams per centimeter cubed. Okay, do you see it? You guys all okay? So guys, you have the densities for all of these elements on your periodic tables. Did y'all find it? Y'all okay? You're good? Okay. So guys, keep that in mind and let's talk really quickly about concepts. Guys, don't put these away, but sort of turn your attention from there <clears throat> to here. Guys, it's critical that you understand density conceptually before you understand this mathematically. So let's talk. So guys, find 
aluminum on your periodic table. It's element number 13. You see it there? Okay. Now, what is the density of aluminum? Two point, is it seven zero? <coughs> 2.70 grams per centimeter cubed. So guys, what on earth does that mean? What that means is that, check it out, for every, and this isn't aluminum, but guys, for every milliliter, centimeter cubed, for every milliliter of, of aluminum that we've got, how much will it weigh? What will its mass be? 2.7 grams. Now, these are both made of aluminum. Now guys, this is the thing that's crazy about density. You ready? These weigh exactly the same. If I were to put these on the balance, or oh, I wish I had one. You guys know how they have those scales that have two pans and they do this? If I put this on one pan and if I put this on the other, it would perfectly balance. These have exactly the same mass. Now guys, what is the density well, let's do it this way. So these have exactly the same mass, but are their densities the same? They're not. Guys, if I handed this to you, this would be all like light and, and, and this is like boom, right? So here's the idea. How can it be that these are both aluminum and they have the same mass, but not the same density? This is more compact. This is all smushified, and there's no air space inside of it. This has got all this air space inside of it. And so because it's got the same mass, but this is bigger, it's a lower density. So guys, when we say that aluminum has a density of 2.7 grams per milliliter, that means this. That means that it's compacted and there's no air space inside of it. Does that make sense? Okay, now what about this? This is not aluminum. This is actually brass. Brass is not an element. It's not on your periodic table. But guys, what do these two blocks have in common? They're the same size and we call size what? What is the word we use for size? Volume. These have the same volume. But guys, I really, I wish I could, I made this mistake once. I actually, it was when I was starting teaching and, and I was like, guys, I wish you could feel these. This thing is like Ugh, and this is all, <laughs> it's all light. And this girl's like, I don't believe you. So I threw her this piece of brass and she went up to grab it and it hit her hands and went right through and hit her in the forehead. It was bad. So guys, just here, we can do this. So I'm going to dent your tail. So guys, here's aluminum, right? Kind of bounces around. This is brass. You get the idea, right? Okay, that's better than your forehead. But guys, here's the idea. These now have the same volume. But do they have the same density? Which one's more dense, brass or aluminum? So what does that tell you about brass? There's more mass stuffed inside this space. So guys, do you understand the concept of density? Okay, now let's do the math of density. So guys, you now understand the concept. And frankly, I'm looking forward to seeing if you guys choose to do this for your investigation how you all choose to teach the concept of, of density. I did it by comparison. You may have a better way. I can't wait to see. So guys, now we're going to do the math. And what you're going to find out is that that mathematical relationship, density is mass divided by volume, we're going to use to solve some problems. And I'm going to show you a couple examples, and we'll talk about how these go. So guys, and you're going to see some of these in homework. So something like this. What if we do this? What if we don't write down the example, and then if you want it, you can print the notes? What do you think? Okay, so guys, check this out. It says a metal block that weighs 100 grams has a volume of 8.81 cubic centimeters. If the block is an elemental metal, what metal is it? So guys, how can we figure this out? How can we identify an element, a metal, based upon its mass and volume? What can we do? Exactly. We find its density, and then we go compare. So guys, check this out. Do this with me. Let's do the math. So guys, in order to figure this out, and I would encourage you to do this with me, density is mass divided by volume. Guys, again, anytime you use an equation, write it down. Now, what is the mass of this metal? 
100 grams. What is the volume of this metal? 8.81 centimeters cubed. And when we do that math, guys, let's talk. How many significant digits in the numerator? Four. This is a final zero. That's trapped. How many significant digits in the denominator? Three. So how many do we get in our answer? Three. And the answer is 11.4 grams per centimeter. By the way, guys, interesting little question. Will this float in water? Yeah. How do you know it won't float in water? It's more dense than water. What is the density of water? One gram is one centimeter cubed. The density of water, guys, is one gram per centimeter cubed. And anything that has a density greater than that will not float in water. But guys, what element is it? Have you found one that's 11.4? Which one? So we've got 11 point, I've got 11.35 for lead. Is that the closest? Okay, and I think that's probably what it is. So guys, lead has a density of 11.35 grams per centimeter cubed. That's probably what this metal is. And you guys know that lead is more dense than water, of course. You good? Okay, so now guys, we're gonna solve one more. Goes like this. What is the mass of 1,000 250 centimeters cubed of aluminum. Guys, let me show you what we're talking about. You ready? How much aluminum is this? Well, guys, this is 1,000. This is 100. This is 200. This is 10, 20, 30, 30, 40, 50. So the question is this. If we had this much aluminum, what would it weigh? That's what we're figuring out. So guys, how do we calculate this? Well, guys, in order to calculate this, the first thing we need is an equation. <clears throat> now, guys, let the equation drive your thinking. What are we solving for? First four words. What is the mass. So guys, we are solving for mass. So if we want to solve for mass, what do we need to know? The density and the volume. Where do we get the density of aluminum? Off the periodic table. It's 2.70 grams per centimeter cubed. We already identified that. Uh-oh. I didn't put centimeters cubed. I put milliliters. We okay? They're the same. Then guys, what is the mass? We don't know, that's our X. Then guys, what is the volume? 1,250 milliliters. Now gang, how do we solve this? Cross multiply. Is that where you're headed? Yeah, just cross multiply. Watch significant digits, three and 270, 2.70, three and 1,250. So you get three significant digits in your answer. That would be 3,380 grams. All right, so guys, here's what we've done today. We very quickly went over all the metric stuff you need to know. Then we talked about these prefixes that make things bigger and smaller. And then we wrapped up the day talking about density. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna finish the day by giving you the opportunity to sort of figuratively get your hands dirty. Then when I see you on Monday, you're gonna go into lab and you're gonna be given a bunch of substances and you're gonna figure out their densities. Then you're going to be calculating percent errors given what their densities actually are. Then guys, on Wednesday, it's time for the test. So guys, grab your homework packet and let's talk about what we're gonna do. All right, last assignment in the packet. So guys, let's do this, do the back first. On the back, and it's assignment number three. On the back, you'll notice there are four density problems. Solve them. But you're not going to get to that right now. Go to the front. See the table there? Guys, here's how this goes. Reading the columns, it says object, and you're given about 15 things. Then the second column says device. 
The question is, what device would you use to make that measurement? Then the third thing is, what are your chosen units? And then the last one is, what is your estimate of what this measurement will actually be? So guys, let's do the first one together. You ready? Thickness of a dime. I don't have any change in my pockets, but can you picture what we're talking about? Not the width of a dime, but the thickness of a dime. So guys, let's talk. What device would you use to measure the thickness of a dime? I would suggest a ruler. Now, guys, if we come and if we grab a ruler, <clears throat> well, here, I'll just use my big one here. So guys, if we use a ruler or a meter stick to make this measurement, now we need to choose some units. Obviously, meters is stupid, right? What about decimeters? Ain't small enough. What about centimeters? Ain't small enough. What about millimeters? Now we're talking. So guys, I would suggest that millimeters would be a good chosen unit. What about micrometers? Millionths of a meter, way too small. So guys, I think centimeters would be a good choice. Now what I want you to do is I want you to estimate how big this actually might be. So let's grab a dime and let's actually make this measurement. So we're here and we'll hold that up there. And it's about two millimeters. Now guys, and one, but guys, that's, I'm glad that you said that because here's the thing, guys, that last column is an estimate. I would just ask that you sort of hold this up and eyeball it and maybe you're picturing a millimeter and you're like, that's about one, maybe it's 1.5, maybe it's two. It certainly is an 11, right? So guys, I want you to make a reasonable estimation, but it doesn't have to be right. So now the question becomes, how are we going to grade this on Monday? And here's the answer. You have got to have the second and the third columns correct. You need to pick the right device. For thickness of a dime, if you put thermometer, you're in trouble. It's got to be a reasonable device. Then, guys, you need to pick reasonable units. But understand, guys, I don't expect you to get your estimates right. They're estimates. I want you to make an educated guess. And on Monday, when we grade these, I'll actually show you what these really are. Go ahead. That's up to you. Yeah, I frankly didn't know they had two. I, I was thinking the big pool, the lap pool. Yeah, okay. No, 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 but you're, but you're gonna estimate it. No, yeah, and that's the idea, guys. You're making estimates. Now, here's the thing, guys. Some of these are, are specific to this room, like the height of the ceiling, the, th oh, by the way, where's thickness of the desk? Thickness, oh, thickness of the lab counter. Guys, that's this, okay? So you are more than welcome to get up and move around the room. If you wanna use my balances, my meter sticks, if you wanna stick a, a meter stick in the sink to figure out the volume of the sink, feel free to do that. Guys, you've got 20 minutes to work on this. Let's ask questions and then you'll have time to finish it. Go ahead, Sam. What's the context? Okay, can, and it's not now, it's Vivint Electronic Smart Home Super Duper Arena or whatever it's called. You know where we're talking about, right? Yes. So guys, let's be reasonable about this. I know that you think you're in a science class, which means you gotta be all sciency and go, if I'm gonna measure the distance in kilometers, I'm certainly going to use a, 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 a kilometer stick. No, <laughs> how, if I ask you how far is it to Energy Solutions Arena, what would you do? You'd Google it. Yeah, that'd be my device, is Google. <laughs> or if nothing else, maybe your car, although it probably doesn't measure in kilometers. But guys, you want to be reasonable about this. Don't get all trying to come up with answers that you think I want to hear. These should be practical. So Kat, I've been ignoring you. Did you have a question? You're okay? You guys all set? Okay guys, you got 20 minutes to work on this. We'll grade these Monday, go get them. <laughs>